cases, if you're still running away from silicones, and I think it's high time we address this and be done with it. Are silicones bad for curly hair? Or any other type of hair for that matter of fact? Uh, no. Now before you bring out your pitchforks, hear me out. My philosophy remains that most not all, but most hair care ingredients can be beneficial to the hair when used properly. So in today's video, I'm going to be addressing some long-standing claims and concerns about using silicones in curly or natural hair. And as usual, I'm also going to be sharing names and specific categories of silicones that you can look out for when you're selecting products with silicones in them. Okay, you guys, get your snacks, make yourselves comfortable, cause this tea is hot and we're about to get into it. It's really sad to me to think that when most people think about silicones, they automatically either categorize it as good or bad, usually bad, and then that's where it stops. But how many of us actually understand what their function is or what they were created for? Think about it. If you were a chemist looking to create products that would improve the quality of people's hair, would you make, use, or include ingredients that would be purely detrimental to your consumer's hair? Doesn't sound quite right, does it? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but to me that sounds like a surefire way to run your business into the ground. So it must be the case that there has to be at least one beneficial purpose for which these ingredients were created. And as you're about to find out, this is also the case with silicones. This is why it's so key to find out what those benefits are and then see how you can use them properly so that they can work to your advantage. So really what are silicones and what exactly do they do? So silicones are synthetic emollients, so kind of like synthetic oils. These ingredients are commonly used in both hair and skincare products, primarily for their slip or lubrication, their shine, as well as their moisture retention properties, amongst other things. I know, I know, judging by what the mob has told you, you were probably pretty triggered by that last one. But do me a favor and bear with me because we're about to clear that up in just a minute. Okay, so if silicones are so great, then why were they canceled in the first place? Well, dear. So let's address some of these claims. And how about we start with the one that silicones suffocate and dehydrate your hair and therefore don't allow your hair to absorb moisture. First of all, your hair is dead. It doesn't need to breathe. And secondly, when used properly, and that is either in conjunction with or after moisture ingredients have been applied to your hair, silicones actually work to preserve the moisture in your hair so that it leaves your hair at a much slower rate. And if this is the case that you are actually moisturizing your hair properly before using silicones, then you really shouldn't be worrying yourself too much about getting moisture in. I mean, the same goes for applying oils to dry, unmoisturized hair. Let's just say if you don't properly moisturize your hair, then the issue isn't the silicones, okay? Now, in addition to keeping the moisture that's inside your hair, inside your hair, the waterproofing properties of silicones are really good at preventing humidity from breaking the hydrogen bonds that are responsible for holding your hairstyles in place. This is why when used properly, silicones can be a really good way to help fight frizz, shrinkage, as well as deformation of your hairstyles, especially if those styles include some sort of stretching or manipulation that makes your hair look different to what its natural curl pattern is. So for example, blowouts or straightening your hair. Now, before you say it, I know what you're thinking. It's not the one application that's going to be problematic it's the buildup over time. Well, okay then, how about we address this buildup argument? Here are the facts. While some silicones will, not all silicones will actually leave buildup on your hair. So if you're making that assumption or you're making that generalization, then you're only shortchanging yourself. In fact, you've got special kinds of silicones like amidimethicone, silicone quaternium 16, 18, and 22, bis-aminopropyl dimethicone, and bis-amino-PEG slash PPG41 slash 3-amino-ethyl PG propyl dimethicone. Yeah, that last one was a mouthful, but that's besides the point. The point is, all of these silicones that I've just mentioned were formulated in such a way that they would not be able to accumulate on top of themselves when applied to the hair. 
In fact, a 1994 study done here in the UK at the University of Portsmouth found something very interesting about the buildup of dimethicone, which by the way is considered one of the more problematic silicones when it comes to buildup. And in case you haven't noticed, is most certainly not on the list of silicones that I just listed that won't accumulate on top of themselves. So if you're gonna worry about any silicone when it comes to buildup, dimethicone is the one. But here's what this study found. They found that when you use a dimethicone containing product on the hair, dimethicone buildup would plateau after just five uses and would not continue to build up on the hair even if it was used up to 50 more times without first washing it off. And then haters will say it's Photoshop. And so if this is the case with dimethicone, which is probably the worst when it comes to buildup, then how much less so for the silicones that were designed to not accumulate on top of themselves? I think you see where I'm going with this. Or how about we talk about the fact that there are silicones that can offer the benefits of slip and lubrication, but were designed to evaporate on their own as time goes on. No? Okay, well, here are their names anyway. You've got hexamethyl disiloxane, cyclomethicone, and cyclopentasiloxane. And so when using these silicones, it's more likely that they will evaporate from your hair as time goes on, as opposed to them actually staying on your hair and causing buildup. Now, please note, I didn't mention every single name of silicones here. I mentioned very specific ones. I mentioned the types that would evaporate on their own. And I also mentioned the types that were designed to not accumulate on top of themselves. But the main takeaway here is that you cannot make a generalization or a blanket statement about all silicones, because whilst they all share similar properties and benefits, not all of them are made equal, especially when it comes to buildup. And then of course, you know we also have to address the sulfate argument. You know, that you can only use harsh sulfates in order to remove silicone buildup from your hair. And because you're using harsh sulfates to remove silicones from your hair, then the silicones are drying out your hair and the sulfates are drying out your hair. And then you just end up in this perpetual cycle of dryness. Well, let's ask science, shall we? So this same 1994 study showed that since dimethicone does not bind to the hair by electrical charge, it can easily be removed by both anionic and amphoteric surfactants. Now I know that probably doesn't mean much to you right now, so I'll explain it like this. So anionic surfactants are your regular sulfates. So your sodium lauryl sulfates, your ammonium lauryl sulfates, you know, all of the ones you guys love to hate. So I'll give you that much. You can use sulfates to remove silicones from your hair. But this study did also report that you can use amphoteric surfactants as well to remove silicones effectively. So common amphoteric surfactants include your cocomidopropyl betaine, cocobetaine, and your cocomidopropyl hydroxysultane. And if you've already seen my video on the different kinds of shampoos that you can use for your natural hair, then you may recognize that these are the main ingredients in none other than your sulfate free cleansers like this one or this one or this one now if you're still unsure or still skeptical about using silicones on your hair for fear of buildup or having to remove them using harsh sulfates then how about you just start with trying water soluble silicones and then see how your hair responds to that water soluble silicones are the third and final group of silicones that i'm going to mention in this video that are much less likely to cause buildup on your hair or need harsh sulfates to remove from your hair. So good examples of water-soluble silicones would include silicones that have been bound to hydrolyzed proteins, for example, hydrolyzed vegetable protein PG silantriol, or hydrolyzed wheat protein hydroxypropyl polysiloxane. And then the more common water-soluble silicones that you will tend to see in product names are the ones that have PEG or PPG attached to the silicone. For example, PEG-12 dimethicone, PEG-7 amodimethicone, or PEG-14 silantriol. Now, PEG simply stands for polyethylene glycol, but the main hack to note here is that the higher the number attached to the PEG, the more water-soluble the silicone is likely to be. And this is simply because that number represents the amount of polyethylene glycol molecules that are bound to the one silicone molecule. So for example, if you had PEG-22 amodimethicone, it would be more water soluble than PEG-7 amodimethicone. And that's simply because the concentration of the silicone is less when compared to the concentration of the polyethylene glycol. 
Wow guys, we've been through a lot in this video. But now that we've cleared that up, in my upcoming videos, I'm so excited to be able to share with you guys some of my personal favorite ways to use silicones, not just to condition, but to protect as well as retain length in your hair. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future content. That's everything from me today, guys. I really hope that this video has helped to clear up this age old million dollar question. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Nah.